Welcome to our tutorial on input and output VST connections or Virtual Studio Technology Connections. In this tutorial we'll be picking up where we left off in our previous lesson. We were talking about how to set up Cubase to receive audio signals. We set up our input and output ports. Now we need to connect your ports, the physical connections on your audio interface, to the Cubase virtual buses. You may be asking, what's a bus? A bus is like a virtual audio cable that carries a signal from one point to another inside Cubase. Buses don't bring any noise to your audio. There's no degradation of the signal. You can use buses individually, in stereo pairs, or in multi-channel groups. First, let's select Devices and VST Connections. The shortcut is F4. Let me drag this up here. The VST Connections panel opens. Because you need at least one output bus, you should configure your VST Connections before you begin a new Cubase project. That's why we're doing it now. From the VST Connections panel, you group your ports, your physical connections, in different ways. For example, there are some times where you need to use two inputs as separate mono connections, but sometimes you may need to use the same ports together as a single stereo connection. The VST Connections panel offers six tabs, Inputs, Outputs, Group Effects, External Effects, External Instruments, and Studio. We're going to be looking at each of these tabs in more detail later in this course. For the time being, let's just worry about creating an input and an output bus so we can start recording. Let's click on the Inputs tab. Here we see a list of presets, as we named them in our previous tutorial. We can also create our own buses manually here if we don't want to choose any of these presets. While I will need a stereo bus in, I also need a mono input bus for recording mono instruments like my bass, clarinet, accordion, and vocals. Let's go ahead and add a bus to accommodate my mono input needs. The first step is to click on the Add Bus button. The Add Input Bus dialog window opens. Let's open the Configuration drop down menu and select Mono. We've got a lot of other options here stereo, left right center surround, and many other types of multi channel input. From this window, you can create as many buses as you need. I only want to create one bus, so I'm going to leave it as is. But if I do want to create more, I can just click up or down if I want to create fewer. Click OK and the window closes. Here's my new bus visible in the input connection window. From the audio device column, select the audio device driver you want to use for this bus. I'm going to select my M Audio Firewire card. In the device port column, Select the audio device port that you need to use. I'm going to use input 1. There, I've just told Cubase where the sound is coming from. You can rename a bus by double clicking on it. A rectangle appears around the name when you're able to edit it. The name that you enter here will be the bus name available to you in the input drop down menu for each audio track. I'm going to call this bus microphone. Press enter when you're done. Your list of available buses is now visible in the VST Connections panel on the inputs tab. The first column has an icon that displays their configuration at a glance, whether mono, stereo, or surround. Now let's click on the Outputs tab. Outputs are used to listen to what you've recorded. Once again, you can create your output buses manually or select them from a list of presets. Your available outputs will appear here. We're going to add our output buses just like we added our input bus a moment ago. Click on the Add Bus button. The Add Output Bus dialog window opens. Choose the configuration you need. Most people do want to listen to their output in a stereo mix, but you may also want some surround sound options. Let's choose stereo. Select a number, click OK. 
Your available outputs will appear here. Now, in the Audio Device column, select the driver you need to use for this bus if it's not already selected. Since we mainly listen to music as a stereo mix, basically the only output you really need is one stereo output. You can listen to music with more than two channels, for example if you have a surround sound setup, but generally you'll need at least just one stereo output. In the Device Port column, select the port on the audio device that you'll be using for this bus. And we'll select our second stereo output. Excellent! Now we've just told Cubase where the sound should go. Notice that my preset and my new bus actually use the same outputs. I don't need a second stereo bus. I'm going to delete it by right-clicking and selecting Remove Bus. You can also rename the bus by double-clicking on it. A rectangle appears around the name when you're able to edit it. The name you enter here will be the bus name available to you in the output drop-down menu for each audio track. We can adjust the width of these columns here also. I've called it Stereo Out. If you don't want any enabled click tracks to echo to this bus, toggle the click track off in the click column. We'll be learning how to use the click track later in this course. And now in the Outputs tab, we can see our list of output buses. The speaker column displays the configuration, mono, stereo. In my case, I see this little speaker which shows that I've created a stereo output bus. We don't need to click OK or anything, we just close the panel when we're finished. And this concludes our tutorial about setting up input and output VST connections. We're almost ready to begin a new Cubase project.